Hello friends and very welcome to our channel Great Saints. Recently I heard Father Mark Gorin speaking on YouTube and he said that Saint Francis of Assisi was known as the fool for Christ. So what on earth does that mean? Should one even speak of a saint as a fool? Surely not. So just adding a couple of my own thoughts here. In fact, it turns out that St. Francis of Assisi was quite happy to be known as Christ's fool. And being a fool for Christ, of course, is also a biblical concept. So we're going to have a look at a couple of examples of both of these now. Of course, here we're not talking of an insane person, an insane fool who drives everyone mad. But it is rather a person who is insanely in love with God. With our Lord and he'll do crazy things for our Lord to prove his love and Christ in answer in return will do crazy miracles for him. Now at the time of St. Francis of Assisi the church was really in a pretty bad state. Everyone was jostling for positions and for prestige in the church that's what was important and so here arrives St. Francis of Assisi on the scene seeking none of this. He embraced instead lady poverty. He didn't seek prestige, didn't mind being seen as a social outcast. And besides all of this, he was talking of things like Brother Wolf and Sister Moon. Of course here, he was just admiring the workmanship of God in creation. But at one time, when St. Francis of Assisi was found preaching to the animals, after that, he was given this title, God's Fool, and that name just stuck. So why would he preach to the animals? Well, here's an example, and I'm not sure if it was him or one of his immediate followers, perhaps St. Anthony of Padua, was seen preaching to the fish. There's this large lake, and the fish came out, and they all listened to his preaching. At the end of the sermon, he blessed them. The great saint blessed them. And this fish now proceeded to swim off, but in the shape of a cross, in a cross formation. And the villagers who had refused to listen to the saint's sermon, they saw this miracle and so they converted. As we said, it is a biblical concept, this idea of foolishness for, for Christ. It is scriptural. And we can see from these two verses, for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom. And the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. And in another place, the great apostle St. Paul says, We are fools for the sake of Christ. So how much of Europe, of the Gentile world, would not have been converted if St. Paul had not embraced that concept? Here's another example of St. Francis of Assisi's foolishness for Christ. He had received this vision a little earlier that he was to rebuild the church, which, according to God, was falling down. So now St. Francis, thinking that this vision referred to the only church in the area, San Damiano, he was now determined he was going to go and restore this church, rebuild it. <clears throat> so he went off and he took some rolls of cloth from his father. His father was a cloth merchant. He went and he sold this cloth. He kept the money and this was set aside for the renovations of the church. But his father was not at all impressed and wanted that money back. At this point, St. Francis went into hiding. And he remained hidden until a, bishop's, a meeting was arranged with the bishop. So his father was present, the bishop was present, and now St. Francis of Assisi was present. And the father still insisted he wants that money back. At which point the bishop said, actually, you can't take something from someone else and sell it. That technically is theft and use that for the church. You do need to give that money back. And so right here, St. Francis took this radical step. He took the money and he handed it back to his father. But not only the money, he proceeded to take all of his clothes off and hand them back to his father as well. They were technically, I guess, his father's clothes. And he declared, from now on, I only have 
one Father, and He is in heaven. And after this radical step, of course, the bishop now had to find some clothing for St. Francis, and they found a very rough, like a, almost a sackcloth of peasant's outfit, and they gave it to St. Francis, and that became the first Franciscan habit. And St. Francis had now truly donned gospel poverty. He had taken lady poverty as his own, the same as our Lord. Another example of St. Francis. Now he went along with the Crusades and he wanted to go and preach to the Sultan in Egypt to try to convert him. And then he did this particularly foolish act. And he walked out between the two armies. He crossed the desert over to the Sultan's camp. What are the chances he's ever going to make it back alive? He, but he was determined he's going to preach to the Sultan. He's hoping to prevent war in that way. And the Sultan listened to his preaching and he was quite impressed. He listened. And at the end of it, he released St. Francis. Now he could go back to the other side, to the Crusader camp. And there are rumors that the Sultan might have looked to our Lord on, the de on his death deathbed. But perhaps the ultimate act of foolishness is to do with Easter. And of course, that is Christ's death on the cross. Foolishness to the Gentiles, as St. Paul called, calls it. Because for the last three years, Christ had been preaching the coming of his kingdom. The next thing he is taken, he is strung up on a piece of wood and he dies in the most humiliating way possible. That foolishness of Christ in God's eyes worked the salvation of the world. So we do have to learn to look at these things, not just with the human eyes, but with the eyes of the spirit. And just a reminder, this great saints apostolate, um, you are very welcome to enroll your mass pre intentions. Just go to our website to enroll your intentions. And we do have a priest of the friars, the Franciscan friars of the Immaculata saying Mass for us. So please do go ahead and enroll your Mass prayer intentions.